was, which I thought was fascinating and also kind of cool at the same time. Obviously, we we produced our top list. Who gives it right? Everyone's like, oh, who cares? They're just waiting for Scar Aficionado to come out. Actually, a lot of people cared because it was the, one of the biggest episodes we've had of the year. Um, but that being said, uh, Chris somehow managed to sneak a Macanudo into his 2020 smoke sessions and rated it really well. So people who listened to the last episode knows that the Macanudo 1977 vintage Maduro made two of our lists. And the best part about that is, is I thought, and I said in the episode that it would be somewhat of a controversial pick. It would be a somewhat of a controversial trophy win um, but what happened was, is a lot of fucking closet Macanudo fans came to its aid, literally supporting the position that it held, which was fascinating to me because there was a lot of people that I didn't know that I didn't interact with. Like, I mean, we have quite a few followers on Instagram, so it's not like I know everybody. Um, so there was a lot, there was a lot of people I didn't know that they were like low key fucking great cigar. Glad you guys put it in the top. And I was like, what? And then there was people who I do know that I never thought ever smoked Macanudos or like low key damn good cigar. <laughs> I was like, what? So I guess you got to say hats off to fucking Macanudo for actually bringing something to the market. That was pretty damn good. I haven't smoked it yet. Now I'm like, I'm so intrigued by it because I just, I've not yet smoked it, but like, the fact that people were on Chris's side in terms of like, glad to see it made a list. Fascinating to me. Just hey, hey, bro, I got two words. Yeah. Winning. <laughs> just, <laughs> just one word. <laughs> no, dude, I was like, I was so, I was so very, I was overwhelmed by the response that people were like, dude, it's actually a pretty good cigar. And I was like, no, it's not possible. It is possible. But it's possible. It was possible. And I was like, God damn, man. You know, and then I started thinking, you know, what was the thing that I was thinking about. So and we already told people we were doing this, but we've revised our system of scoring. We've yeah, revised yeah. our system of the way we produce reviews. And it's so much better. So much better. So much better. It's, it's kind of just like, so much better like if you have the reading level of a four-year-old you're gonna understand these reviews yeah it is it's better for us and we feel it's going to translate to a better experience for the collective yeah. audience but it makes doing reviews so much easier like what and color is the wrapper and we just literally say brown brown <laughs> no other shades it's a maybe I'll throw in a milk brown. chocolate, but that's the extent of it. It's just yeah, brown. Um, no verbose like what's the construction, no verbose like uh what's the burn experience. It's very, you know, we're we've collected um I would say common terms and are utilizing those terms for some of the more matter of fact aspects of a cigar, being are- more in the construction and burn. What are those? Are those verbs or adjectives? I don't know. You know what? Even with the flavors, there's like a mix of everything. I know. So like toasty and toast are two different things. <laughs> yes. But and then, it, yeah. So it's like meat or meaty. And I was like, I don't know about meaty because that's an adjective. Um, meat is a noun. So I just, I baseline everything nouns um, just for consistency sake. But yeah. yeah, so we revise the whole thing, which means it'll allow us to focus more on getting a higher rate, a higher number of reviews out to the audience this year. And they're going to be so much more digestible. I really, really love, I like, I, I be honest with you. I haven't looked forward to doing a review in ages. And now it's like, I just want to smoke everything and just review it. Like yeah. it, that's how much I love it. Like I love the idea of putting out a review minus smoking it. I mean, granted it takes like an hour and a half, two hours to smoke a cigar. Right. Right. But the actual, production side of it the creative writing side of it it'll literally take 10 minutes yeah that's it that's it there's no like pondering a bunch of shit and we're like telling you something you haven't seen yet but it like in due time we're we're getting ready to do some testing for the site as far as how it's going to be mapped but the process itself is written the background um the foundation for how it's going to be 
um, positioned on the website is done. It's just now it's like piecing together. It's as simple as the child novel called The Kid and the Balloon. And each page has a couple words. It's like, here is the kid. This is his red balloon. (laughs) The kid loves his red balloon. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's like. And you just understand that the majority of our audience are a bunch of (laughs) re-reads. We're trying to make it as simple as possible. You (laughs) dumb fucks. (laughs) The reading comprehension is it's gonna be it's gonna be so simple. Yeah, it'd be it'd be great to pull like pod stat, podcast statistics as far as like geography, listen listeners, like certain demographics, and then one of the demographics just being like intelligence level, and it's like <laughs> hot ticket podcast. I collective IQ of forty seven as an average. <laughs> this is probably what it'd be because you're a bunch of fucking dum dums. <laughs> I mean, you listen to this podcast. You can't be all that intelligent. No, I mean, I'm dumb. I just said winning was two words. I know. Winning. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can see how syllables and words can fuck you up. Yeah, that's true. Now, syllables they use on drum sets, right? Yeah, that's what a syllable is. <laughs> Oh, you're ridiculous. Did you notice that I changed my background colors? I have blue and purple. Oh, I do see. It's a slight. I kind of gra- like the aesthetic of the mixed color. It's a slight you know, graduation. I, I didn't want I didn't want to come off as though I'm not inclusive. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to use multiple colors in my background scheme. And not yeah. just one. See, I'm I decorated my spot too. I like flowers. Yeah. And I love those little home statements that everybody puts in their houses. Dude, I, that is a super pet peeve of mine. Like in your bathroom downstairs, like that type stuff. Like but if, I, if there's I, one that says live, laugh, love, I will burn it. It pretty much is. It says you cook, I will drink the wine. Ew. I got them everywhere. I must even drink wine. I bought her a bottle of wine like three years ago, and I'm pretty sure it's unopened. I will say mom is not quite the drinker anymore. I mean, she's no, got, she really gave up on it, didn't she? She's got a graveyard of liquors, which I think most of them are mine. <laughs> yeah, probably. Dude, like the Tito's? I drink every night. So let me let me tell you something that I'm challenging myself to do as we roll into the new year. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who decided that dry January was going to be a thing, right? Give my liver a break. And I did the opposite. And I said, I'm going to drink bourbon every single night for the month. And as we've rolled through, essentially at this point, the 14th, close Mm -hmm. to the halfway point of the month, I have met my goal. I have drank more bourbon in the month of January than I probably did all of last year. So I am railroading my liver completely into the ground and i'm gonna do so until a doctor tells me not to because it's (laughs) delicious so (laughs) cheers to that cheers to that cheers i mean well hold on i don't uh i don't have an alcoholic beverage but i guess i'll toast my diet coke you can do that chink chink um, I want to get into this, uh, this news related article thing. So I, I saw this today and I'm so glad I saw it. And it is, a a guy put up a, a cigar shop in, um, Elmhurst, Illinois, which I've been to before because I've traveled through Elmhurst many times for business. And I visited this cigar shop multiple times, but he put a, uh, he put a Biden, Biden voters keep out sign on his door, which I think is cute. Um, but I want to play the video real quick. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hurst is making things political and he isn't afraid to explain why. He tells CBS 2's Jeremy Ross that it's his right to do what some people say is plain wrong. CBS 2's Jeremy Ross joins us live from downtown Elmhurst with more on this storefront sign controversy. Jeremy, what's going on here? And Charlie, that business owner is really not afraid to speak. I like how it goes into it. If you voted for Joe Biden, like, he doesn't Jeremy. want your business. He doesn't want your cash. He doesn't even want you in the store and is prepared to suffer the consequences as a form of protest. In downtown Elmhurst, there are many signs. A little surprising, I guess. But one put up weeks ago 
is starting to draw more attention. Did a double take and looked at it. Just find it really, truly appalling. Biden voters keep it's out. truly appalling. That it's I definitely like that egregious. That. <laughs> it's a fucking <laughs> sign. In. But I find that offensive. I find it horrible. I'm a Trump supporter. So if somebody put um, Trump supporters stay out, I wouldn't, you know, find that a very kind thing to put. Why put the sign outside of your business? I don't want them anyway. I don't want them in there and I don't want to have to pretend that they have respect for me. So I'm going to show disrespect for them. This is no joke. You do not want Biden voters in. Don't come in my store. I love the hard stance. Your friends. I don't great. want you in the store. I don't want you near me. Speaking to us from South Florida, Sean Thompson says he's owned the Elmhurst Cigar House for about six years. But following the hotly contested November presidential election, he decided a sign of protest was appropriate. Hey, are- huh. So what do you think about the hard stance? Like, what what is your opinion? So like if you're. So I will say this, like 2020 is challenge was challenging times. 2020, we've entered 2021 with some of those same challenges in terms of like COVID, right? Like yeah, and yeah. Chicago isn't a friendly state in terms of, or sorry, Illinois is not a friendly state in terms of like, um, I would say lessening the COVID restrictions. It's a very, very popular, like Chicago is very populated city. It's democratic state. Sure. Democratic run for the most part. So to, I mean, it's, you're already limited in what you're going to be able to do in your business. And this guy basically was just like, Hey, Biden supporters go fuck yourselves, which you know, has adversely affected his business. Because if someone voted for Biden and is passionate about politics, walked up to the store, seen the sign and just turned the other way. Yeah. So what do you feel about his hard stance? Do you think there's like a, a reason, or do you think there's legitimacy around the fact that he should like, it's his business. He can run it the way he wants and, and, you know, good for him to, take his political stance or do you think that's just a ridiculous thing to do i mean yeah if you don't like money sure (laughs) like that's kind of how i see it but i feel like he should up it a little bit you know it should be something like a sign that says if we don't smoke cigars stay the fuck out which is the perfect thing you say because you don't want people coming in there to buy a pepsi or buy a couple lottery tickets which i've seen in a lot of tobacconist shops like you know there's some things you could do. I think the more troubling thing, and I, and this is maybe a slight derailment of this entire discussion, but have you noticed that everybody in that video wearing a mask uh, looks like a character from the Mortal Kombat series, whether they be like Noob Sabat or Smoke? Or Get anything. over here. I feel like everybody's a Mortal Kombat character anymore because they're wearing face masks. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a little... they, definitely, they definitely look I mean, yeah, the, every, everybody looks like they're about to rob a bank. Yeah. So it's like the... if, if, if there's a perfect time to rob a bank, it's now because everyone's wearing a fucking mask. Yeah, like it's like eh, he was wearing a black mask. Right. Uh, <laughs> like... You're pretty well. I'm surprised that that statistic has not been shared over the course of the year. It's oh, like yeah. Everybody's required to wear masks. So why aren't bank robberies going through the fucking roof right now? Yeah. Or any robbery, like gas station, whatever. Anytime you're looking to conceal your face, like, why is that not a thing? I do think it's, I do like the way the guy entered and was like, but here's where it's, Jeremy. But here's where it's crazy. Here's where I kind of sympathize. I don't necessarily agree. Okay. When I say this. I'm so intrigued by where you're going with this. But I sympathize. Okay. Very antsy. How much does politics come up in a lounge? Honestly, uh, for me, a lot. A lot. Yeah. I was going to say the most lounge experiences that I have in some way, shape or form, depending on the time of year, politics is like a very real thing. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And if you were a shop owner that constantly hears the berating of the president you support or the political party you support. That's probably what it was. I could see how it would get under your skin. I could I, totally I, see it. I, that's probably what it was. Was he was just like tired of hearing people? Something had to have happened into it in his shop. It wasn't like something happened in his personal life or there's division in his family. It's like he heard something in his shop, and then then there's the association of like Biden supporter and my cigar shop no more. And yep. then boom, sign goes up. You're not fucking welcome. Yep. I like how it says Biden voters keep out. Like it's like some little boys club, <laughs> like <laughs> girls keep out. Like there's a tree house that he built. Yeah. <laughs> and look at, oh God, it's like, what the fuck is happening in the world right now? Which is kind of weird because we've talked about the inclusivity of what you want a cigar lounge to be. 
So if that is truly the case, it's kind of sad and pathetic to me, to be honest with you. I'm, I, I like being able to go to the cigar lounge and talk to people who have differences of opinion and get yeah. an understanding of both sides. But some people are so, they are so attached to their political views and their political thoughts that there is no room for anything else. And it yeah. sounds like that's kind of how this guy is. He seems like a class A doucher. I yeah. Mean, um, he was driving a convertible car. So I let me in the let winter. Me, let me clarify. <laughs> Elmhurst, Illinois, is cold right now. In the winter. And he's in a convertible. <laughs> so major league doucher. And it's probably like a Dodge Sebring convertible, not even like a cool convertible. It's like, like an old Mazda Miata. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to roll with my top down. I'm going to blast that heater so right. I don't freeze to death. But I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, he's definitely I, I suspect and I don't know if there's going to be like any follow up to this at all. But I do suspect that over the next couple months, his business is going to it's going to drop off dramatically, probably. I mean, you're talking about I would say that the majority of people who go to cigar lounges are probably politically more right leaning. Um, depending on where you're at geographically. Sure. Uh, but it's certainly something that is shared by everybody. So it isn't polarizing really one way or the other. So there's going to be some attrition in his customer base for sure. There would be people who are just like, go fuck yourself. And by the way, you're in Chicago. You know how many cigar lounges are in Chicago? They're everywhere, like all over the suburbs. So like another 10 minute drive or less, you're at another premier cigar lounge. So it, his business is going to suffer greatly, I think. So, yeah, because it already hit the news, and you know, older people. This is an assumption. Older people watch the news or read the news. Yeah, and like it ain't going to be good for them. It's no. not. No, I I agree. I don't think it's gonna. It's certainly not going to help his business. I don't think more Republicans are going to be like, can't wait to show up. I just think there's going to be. Less fucking people have voted for it's, Joe Biden when they see the sign. It's like, and, fuck off. And his and put a play on words. His place is going to turn into a Trump dump. You know? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. You're going to get a bunch of like old fucking, you know, fuddy duddies in there. I mean, what's the fun in having a bunch of people that are like minded anyway? It's like, not. Fuck. It's so stupid. Anyway. Let's move on. Um, so Cigar Aficionado published part of their list. They started at number 10. They've made their way to number one, which I always think is weird that they do that. So they reveal the cigar of the year before they review the bottom 15. It's almost like we review 25, the bottom 15 we don't give a shit about, and we'll start with 10 and work our way to one. And then yeah. they just fucking throw up on a Friday all the remaining ones, which by the way, I've already said this, but I've said this so many times. The bottom half of Cigar Aficionado's list is usually the best half. So if it from 11 to 25 are usually the best cigars. From 10 to 1 are usually the ones where I go, uh-huh. Now I will say this. So, and we'll, we'll just break this down. I'm, I, not that I want to give them any more publicity, but it doesn't really fucking matter. They own this fucking space anyway. Um, so number one was the Henry Clay Warhawk Corona, which Henry Clay cigars to me are atrocious. Number nine was a Rocky Patel number six Corona. Great. Rocky Patel made number fucking, I mean, literally in the top 10. Who would have fucking guessed? Oh, who would have guessed this one? The Oliva V. Made it in the top 10. I'm pretty sure it's made it in the top 10 for the past seven years. Um, at number seven is the Alec Bradley Gatekeeper. I had that cigar. It was not good. People at the cigar lounge kept saying it was great, and I was like, fuck it. I'll try it. Not a good cigar. Don't know how I made number seven. Hoya de Nicaragua Numero Uno. I actually heard that was a really good cigar and I haven't tried it yet, so I should probably try it. Punch, Short Day Punch, made number five. This is the only one, actually, four, three, and two, and number one, which I'll reveal. Number four is the La Mission L'Atelier. Oh. Um, so that's fucking dope. That cigar is amazing. I never thought it would make it in a top 10 in Cigar Aficionado's list, but it's pretty dope that a fucking tatuaje he's in there. I think that's awesome. Um, number three is Padron 1964 Anniversario Series Hermoso. And then, of course, number two, Fuente Opus X Double Robusto. I do like Opus X. It's really tough for me to dispute that one. Number one, which I called it, was the EP Carrillo Pledge. So I'm not – it's weird because it's like I have to say I'm not impressed with the list. Um, I am, 
I like that EP Korea sorry cigar. It was in our top, right? Yeah. Like I I smoked that cigar and fucking loved it. But I like most EP Korea cigars. Love the La Storia. Thought the Encore Majestic was pretty good. I thought this cigar, the Pledge, was fucking awesome. So I rated it as high as it did. But I would also argue that there is a conspiracy theory that exists here. Will you ride this with me, Chris? Uh, My conspiracy theory. Go for it. I believe the winner was premeditated. Hear me out. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So let me do this. Let me... Um, I want to show people something real quick. Let me rewind back to two weeks ago. Yeah, let me close my eyes. And on this podcast, very, very healthy oh. community score. Obviously, this one is a favorite amongst folks um, uh, in the cigar community, even though it just literally released just months ago. It has not been on the market that long. That's me, by the way. Late September, October time frame. Um, so the fact that it's already, I guarantee, let's call it now, it's going to make the top five for sure, Cigar Aficionado. I'm betting on it right now. It's definitely going to make the top five. Um, absolutely fucking incredible cigar. So again, hats off to EP Creo. So, Dude, you're like a fucking modern day Nostradamus. Now, I called that it was going to make it, but I'm here's why I called it. It wasn't because it was such a good cigar. I love the cigar. I thought it was great. Again, huge EP Creo fan. The politics. Hear me out. And I th- I've been thinking about this for a while. When the EP Carrillo Pledge came out, it came out with a little bit of fanfare. Like, okay, so think of, if, rewind to the past. EP Carrillo Law Story 2014 was number two. The Encore, Encore Majestic, uh, was it two years ago? Was two or three years ago was number one. Then you have the Pledge. They all have something in common. They all look similar in terms of the aesthetics, like the bands, the rappers, they're all painted They're It's the same graphic. It's the same art minus the name and the color. So there's uniformity to what they are and what they represent. Right. Yeah. If you go back to September, when the cigar was announced, there was a little bit of fanfare behind it because it, it was right alongside and paralleled with two other just fucking monster EP Creo cigars. But one of the things that I thought was strikingly weird about the release of the cigar was they released it. EP Creo is usually pretty good about making things regular production and always having stock in the shelves. For example, the cigar lounge you and I go to yeah, always yeah. has EP Creo stocked. If you buy the dust, the Encore Majestic, the La Historia, any EP Creo cigar, they have an abundance of them. But over the course of four months, what couldn't they get a hold of? The pledge. Couldn't get a hold of the pledge. I found the pledge in one humidor, which by the way is one of the biggest humidors in Ohio is where I found it. So my theory is, my conspiracy theory is, is that there was allocation to get it out in the market to give it some exposure when it was supposed to be produced and out there. But I think the placement of a number one seed for Cigar Aficionado was premeditated. And here's why. You produce a cigar, it's supposed to be regular production, but you can't get it out to all these humor. I mean, people complain all the time. It's like, I haven't really been able to find it. I haven't tried it yet because I can't find it. Push box sales? Think about this. If you already know you're going to be the winner, your EP Creo didn't stop producing this cigar. No. Let's say they are, let's just hypothetically say they already knew they were going to win back in September. That gives them the opportunity to take some of their inventory, put it in the marketplace. But what it also does is allows them to hold and stock and produce inventory for when the cigar releases in the publication. Because one of the things most of these cigars and the winners every year have challenges is Cigar Aficionado puts out their publication and everybody wants to go storm and blitz the B&Ms for number one. And guess what? Too short supply. The manufacturers haven't anticipated being the top place and Cigar Aficionado has so much clout is that when you hit that top place, when you hit that number one spot, your shit comes, it flies off the shelves. And what can't you do? You can't keep up with production, meaning you're going to be back ordered for the next two or three months before you can get them back on shelves. But not if you knew you won back in September, October. That gives you enough time to build your inventory. So when you are the number one seed, when you get Cigar Aficionado's top mark, then guess what? You'll see all the inventory hit all the shelves and it will be widely available to the masses. No inventory shortages, 
plenty in stock for the people. Dude, you know what this reminds me of? I feel like we're living the movie The Longest Yard and Burt Reynolds is E.P. Carrillo and he just got caught sports betting to like fix the game. Yeah. And he's they're he, they're going to go to jail. Are you with me on this theory? I am. I am because that always pops up. That that always seems to happen with the number 1. It's like the back order issues, the you're trying to like it's like it's like riding a sur- like a, a a fucking wave, right? You're a surfer. And the anticipation of the wave, like the minute you send out your samples to Cigar Aficionado and they go, oh, that's good. That's likely to be like number one. In fact, they say, yep, that made our number one list on our list. That's when you go, oh, shit, the wave's coming. Let's prep to ride this wave the best we possibly can. I'm telling you right now. I believe in my theory, and I think I may have convinced other people to believe in my theory as well. It just doesn't make sense any other way because I, I remember making the statement. I was like, why can't I, – I talked to the, the owners of the shop that you and I go to. The last they, still, they still don't have it, by the way, since Tuesday. They, they I was still just there. don't have it. They ordered them back in late September, and I go, you guys have every other EP Korea stock on the shelves, no problem, but you can't get a hold of the pledge. This is a regular production cigar. It doesn't make sense. I was like, this wasn't like this like crazy fucking unknown thing. It wasn't like the H99 or the, the 10-year anniversary or the number 10 anniversary, whatever the fuck it was from Drew Estate, where it was just like a big hype machine, and it's just a marketing ploy. It's like, this is a regular production cigar that barely anybody can get their hands on it's like you here's the thing you put just enough in the marketplace to wet the beaks that's what you did you're wetting beaks you're wanting people to get on it you want people to get a little bit of exposure to it and feel it out and then when you know you're going to get that top spot you know you're going to be number one you flood the fucking market i guarantee in the next two days a ton of shipments go out of the pledge and they'll be all over the fucking place B and G's will have them. All the places local to us that have them, they'll be smattered across the United States because they already knew they were gonna fucking win. Yeah, dude. I play. My mic is attached to a boom arm, but if it wasn't, I'd drop that motherfucker. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to E. P. Carrillo of the Cigar of Association. <laughs> Go and <laughs> to the, I, f- I feel like we've all been part of the system on this one. We were oh, all pawns. We were all fucking duped. And here's the thing. I love the cigar. It's really good. I really like it. And there's people who are going to dog it. Like, and I get it. I know like people are going to dog it. It's like EP Cree always hits in the top spots. Like it happens all the time. But they're a great contract manufacturer. There's a lot of consistency in what they do. And their their cigars are just flavor-wise, they just hit my palate differently than a lot of other stuff. I look forward to smoking EP Korea cigars no matter what they are, whenever. They come out with a release, I smoke it. So I'm on board. I just think there's some fishy, fishy stuff going on in the background here. It's just too coincidental and, and I made the prediction not because it tasted so good. I made the prediction based upon everything I just told you. We'll see what yeah. happens. We'll see what happens. You think, you think this whole Trump shit is the fucking news right now? You think the impeachment's the news? You think storming the Capitol is the news? You think all that's an Antifa conspiracy theory? This is the conspiracy theory you should be following because I've just uncovered something. I wouldn't be surprised tomorrow if the machine kills me. I wake up dead in my fucking portable goddamn Eskimo tent out back, lifeless fucking cold dead body with a knife in my fucking ear. I'm, it's like you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and Ernesto is going to be standing over. It's like, you should have not said anything. <laughs> yeah. Now, now what to do with Sikori Allen? <laughs> I don't not know. What do you think, Jimmy? And Jimmy's just some mob guy. I don't know. It's like Jimmy and Tony. Are I think we bash. I think we fucking bash his head in and throw him in the river. I think that's a great idea, Jimmy. 
I think that's a great idea. Yep. I'm going to get Ernesto'd. <laughs> yeah. It's the end of my life right there. You know what? Or maybe everything I'm saying doesn't make any sense at all. I think that's the point of a conspiracy. Like, so long as yeah. you can rationalize anything, even if it's not factual, but it just makes sense rationally, yeah. it's like, why not? I, this makes sense to me. Yeah. This makes sense. And it's made sense to me for a while because I've, I've, I've pondered so many times why this thing isn't more widely available. It never made sense to me. And you know what? And here's the thing. It's like, not that they, not that anyone could dispel necessarily, but you could certainly talk your way out of and, the things that I'm saying. You could say, oh, well, there was a shortage of production of the tobacco and, that we used or whatever. Yeah. Or there's COVID things and there's other manu- there's other contract manufacturers we're behind on. So we're trying to catch up on those. So we're limiting our production on it. There's so many things. But they're not they the type of brand. To- they're not the type of brand to, to have a hiccup in distribution like that. No, but... 2020 strange times man oh my god do you think the cure for covid is inside the ep creel pledge and then that they are just mass producing it to get it out what if the pledge is a vaccine to covid that'd be awesome well i've i've often stated that i thought not that cigars were the cure but they were certainly a prevention tactic and what if and I've not yet had COVID. Ernesto, like a fucking episode of Scooby Doo, is actually Biden. <laughs> Old Mr. Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Could be. You know what's weird too is like, like Zoic Scoop. Do you think it's weird that like in all the Scooby-Doo episodes, like the bad guys always wearing a mask and when they uncover it, it's an old guy? What would oh, you yeah. do with Joe Biden? Co- uncover an older guy? <laughs> you uncover a skeleton? Like what's and what's on the other side of it? It's none it's other Kamala. than Sleepy Joe. It would be Kamala Harris. It would just be a <laughs> fucking black woman. <laughs> Someone should make that cartoon. That'd be great. Um, we do have a review. This would be our first review of 2021. This is yeah. pretty incredible. Um, I somehow managed to get my hands on these cigars thanks to our friends at Small Batch. Thank you so much. Um, I was able to get five of these bad boys, and there's a lot of hype around the cigar um, for many reasons. One, this is an original six, 2016 release from Warped, which was the Maestro del Tiempo. This is a special edition. It's the 6102R. I don't know what the numbers mean all the time. Um, I know it's an association to the Vitola, I believe, or yeah. I don't know. It's like calling a car not a name and just associating a number like an RX-7. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? Um, so this this limited edition came out in very late 2020. I was hoping to get it in as far as review in 2020, but it's obviously going to be the first one in 2000. Uh, 2021. So it is again the warped Mestre de Tiempo 6102R. Um, cigars blended Agonorsa as all warped cigars are Agonorsa, and surprise, surprise is Nicaraguan Puro. So there is something that is um, apparently different about the blend of the cigar. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it obviously has a lot of similarities to the regular production. Um, Big difference, Vitola, five and a quarter by 48. It's more of that Corona size, which I love. It's a little bit, it's like a thicky Corona, um, which I really, really love. And uh, one co- the cost per stick is roughly twelve fifty. So it does have a little bit of a premium. Um, I've argued, and I thought, it, I thought it was always strange, like Warped is a weird, it's a weird brand for me because I think their best cigars are the ones that are lower priced. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, we've got an offer. And there's some other ones that are in the recent, which I'm like, uh, you know, your stuff that's nine dollars and under to me is always the best. It's the stuff that exceeds ten dollars, right? Just kind of go, eh. Uh, which is always kind of a weird thing. But let's see how this one shakes out. Did you say it right though? What what did you say that there's, there's like a phrase or statement that you said? Is it did you say all intent and purposes? Yeah, all intensive purposes. I thought it was all intensive porpoises. <laughs> I mean, some some say it that way. Yeah. 
I, don't I like know. how people do say that wrong for all intents and purposes. I've seen so many people hear, hear him say intensive. Intensive purposes. You're like, you're not saying that right. Like you, <laughs> you say that your whole life? Because that's been wrong. Yeah, <laughs> your life. Uh, yeah, you have to say you have to say that with confidence. Yeah. Because if you don't, you'll fuck it up. Like with all intensive have, purposes. Yeah. Right. And you before I get say, with all intensive purposes, what you need to understand is that it's a warp cigar. Right. It is a warp cigar. And uh, it's been a while since we've smoked. A, or not, it's not been a while for me that I've smoked a warp. It's been a while since I reviewed one, probably summer of last year. Um, so I, I personally very excited to smoke a warp cigar again in just the first part of 2021. So yeah, guys, new scoring system is the first time doing this first time articulating this on the podcast. So let's get into it. You know what? Be brave with us because we're not really sure how this is going to shake out, but I have a high degree of confidence saying that this is going to be good. Yeah. I mean, the scoring is pretty much the same. It's just, we're going to give you a score again. <laughs> yeah. Plus a recommendation or with a recommendation, which <laughs> yeah. I actually like the two components being balanced together. I think it's cool. It's true. Um, so let's get into it. Chris, uh, I broke down the components. I did all that. Do we need to break down the scoring system? I don't know that you actually have a um, kind of a written or a, a verbal introduction to the scoring system as you've often done in the past. Mm. Um, I could wing it. No, no. I'd like something published if at all possible. Here, we'll just do a take. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. Our start action cuts. Um, okay. Uh, well, with our new scoring system, that's not new, but we'll just say revise. You know what? Scrap that. Rewind. Hold on. I'll start over. With each cigar. No, we don't say it that way. Each cigar review is broken down into three main categories. Everyone construction, burn and flavor. To throw in a little extra kicker, we see if the cigar is worth the price for a possible bonus or deduction. And then finally, we average out our individual reviews, giving you guys our total recommendation and final scoring. That was good. The only no. thing I did, I literally just added final scoring on what yeah. I already read. <laughs> it was pretty much identical. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I like it. That I like, works. I think that uh, felt pretty good. No, it felt it felt authentic. It didn't yeah. feel rushed. It just felt like it, it kind of felt like you were shooting from the hip, but also you know what it's like to me? It's like when people um do freestyle rapping, but they've already really put it in their head. Yeah, you know? they already had their rhyme set up. Yeah. yeah it's already you already you wrote it in your head. Like you already yeah. knew it was premeditated, but you make everyone believe it's like shooting from the hip. So it was yeah. good nonetheless. Um, all right, let's get into it. Chris, what did you think about the construction of this warped cigar? Solid looking cigar, bro. Brown, as we talked about. We're just gonna do simple. Yeah. <laughs> Kid-friendly words to describe the appearance. Cigar is brown. It has paper on it. Um, here's the thing. It is a it is a pretty nice, strikingly good-looking cigar. I like the dual bands. Um, very indicative of the older style of its look. Um, it was a nice, rigid stick. It was well-packed. I did have a slight tearing on the cap, um, but nothing to detriment because I was going to snip it off anyway like a brisk. Um, I thought the cigar in appearance was pretty awesome. Uh, lazy cap structure on mine, no blemishes. It's kind of got that silky smooth wrapper. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of a satin, satin sheen, and it's like it's more like caramel to me in color, right? It's like in between that light Connecticut tan and something that's a little bit darker, the reddish hue, and like a color. Yeah, like a, it's like a scoot. It just kind of fits right in between that. But I'd say overall construction is pretty fucking awesome on the cigar, which is to be expected from Aganor. So, Chris, what do you think about the burn? I thought the burn was exceptional, honestly. Uh, very consistent burn from the get-go. Nice kind of medium light gray ash that was really dense. It was very hard to flick it off. I found myself sitting outside freezing and like trying to toss ash over my shoulder. But every time I do it, I would just be like, God damn, this motherfucker won't get off the damn cigar. Um, it was very dense in ash, which I really appreciate. But the really the shining moment in this burn experience was the fact that it was actually like a good one, two puffer. Oh like yeah. It it didn't take any effort 
to get so much good mouthful of smoke and just smoke production in general. Um, it was a nice amount of resistance on the cigar. I thought at least from the smoky side of things, it was exceptional. Yeah, I dude, I a hundred percent agree. I thought r- arguably one of the best parts of the cigar is how well it burnt yeah. and how well it smoked. And I put phenomenal draw, fantastic smoke production past my five, five minute hold test. No problem. So it's just like the components together. It all made sense from a burn perspective. It was insanely consistent. No outages, nothing like it is one of the best cigars in terms of the burn that I've had in a really long time, like to where it stood out to me. I'm like, God, full fucking mouthfuls of smoke. So easy on the draw, but offers up enough resistance not to be too airy, but definitely not on the tight side. I mean, it's exactly where you want a cigar. I mean, if you were to say, okay, this is the prototype we want to create for the best drawing cigar ever. Like model it after this cigar. It's absolutely fucking fantastic. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, what did, what about the flavors, Chris? This is a, um, this is a cigar of old 2016 with obviously some differences and component changes. What did mm-hmm. you think? And I've had the original before. So what did you think about the flavors of this particular cigar? Yeah. Um, I'm going to treat it like flashcards almost for like children. So you can understand. We these. should have flashcards. <gasps> amazing. Maybe I'll flash it up on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, flashcards would be dope. Just be like, Bleh. ooh, when your face gets like this, mm, bitter. Um, <laughs> ooh, when it's <gasps> oh, peppery. Uh, <laughs> when it's mm, creamy. You know, we could do that for sure. This this cigar predominantly had a very strong bitterness to it for me, especially in the beginning. It does subside a bit as you go through it. But what was interesting that it kind of stood out a little bit from the quartet that I was getting here. I had strong bitterness. I had that pepperiness. I had a tangy creaminess to it as well. But there was this aromatic vibe I was getting, even when I wasn't retrohaling, that gave me this floral in this mm-hmm. that i was like "Ooh, that's a pleasant smell and i can oh, almost taste it almost i didn't taste it but i could definitely smell it <laughs> um but it just it, it was a very consistent cigar of flavors it does mellow out a little bit when you get through about the halfway point where you can kind of pick out some of that tangy creaminess um but the end seems to come back full circle with that strong bitterness that I had in the beginning. So it was kind of like, wake my palate up. Let's take it for a little stroll, a little cruise, and then let's end strong. And uh, it had really, it had a really pleasant uh, uh, flavor, honestly, Um, maybe a little bit too bitter for me in places. I don't know. I'm still debating that, but I thought it was good overall. I thought it was a very complex cigar. Hmm. Um, And it was, it was generally pretty pleasant. Nice. I thought it was, uh, at first, when I first started smoking and I just, I like in the first minute I went, uh Oh, and, <laughs> and my, my, uh Oh was because I really wasn't getting anything impactful. And I was like, Oh shit. Is this like the precursor to what is, you know, to come. And it really, to me, it like it, it almost kind of failed to launch in the way that I wanted to from a flavor perspective that I guess I'm more accustomed to in warp cigars or anything from Aganor. So they're usually like full of flavor right off the bat, but this one kind of had like a little bit of a ramp up period. Um, so not a lot of impactful flavors up front, in my opinion. Oh, but no. As you start uncovering some of the flavors, dude, it's like entering in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. There is so much fucking hey. going on. Spice, pepper, wood, cream. Yeah, it's yeah. Sweet. It's, it's sweet. It's nutty. It's just like, there's it just almost like sensory overload but it's really good at the same time yeah that's weird you i might start off so bitter like that was the only thing i was picking out in the beginning and then it just like the flavors started popping in little by little yeah Yeah. it's it's it does it has this weird like it's got this weird crescendo to it and then once it launches it's fucking it's in and it's good and it's i really like it and i think it's a very dynamic cigar and i like the flavor profile mostly because I know the intentionality around a lot of what's being created for work mm-hmm. and, and why it is. And, and I find myself attaching myself to those types of flavors of cigars. 
Um, so there's not really many warps that I don't like. And I was really wanting to like this one. And I did, I thought it was really great. It's very complex, very dynamic, um, very sensible cigar in terms of flavors. Um, I think the flavor matched with the burn. God it, damn, dude. It's like, pretty this, solid. This cigar is a very solid cigar as we roll it through the first one of 2021. I mean, there's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad you came around because I was starting to think my palate was still off. <laughs> no, it was it was strange. No, it was it like at the beginning, I was like, what am I like? Am I sucking the asshole of a black hole? What is this? Like <laughs> there was nothing there. And but then it just like and then it was off, man. And, and then the cigar just opened up. It was it was incredible. I really enjoyed it. Um, it does come out of premium. I mean, this is a guard. We're talking about five and a quarter by 48. So not yeah. on. We talk about if we were to use Robusto as like the median average of size of cigar, which is a traditional five by 50, this would be less than that. And this is $12 and 50 cent cigar. On this it's RP. $12, 12 50, 12 50. Mm, should I change? Yeah, my, should I change my review on that? I didn't realize that was how much it was. Yeah. 12 50 for this special edition. Um, so I've got to ask the question, Chris, and I'm putting you on the spot. Did you think it's worth 1250? Oh God. Oh, mm. master of time. Does the name mean it's worth $12? Uh, I mean, $12 is a lot. A lot for that. It's you get a good. lot for twelve dollars. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good, but you know what price would you feel comfortable paying for this cigar every day? Ten. Okay. So you've answered your own question. Yeah, I gotta change it. I gotta. I gotta <laughs> do it. Yeah, it's just it's it it's um I I wasn't quite sure what the price point was. Corey ended up finding it last second just to confirm because like I thought it was like ten, but um if it's 12 yeah, i mean the original i think is 10 i don't know it, it, i do struggle with that price a bit i really do i really do okay so chris is coming at this with a pricing delta i think given at least for how much i like the cigar i think it's worth the price point but barely but barely and really it's only condition of the toll that causes me to say that um, although I would assume that this cigar is absolutely made for this Vitola, I'm sure it's better in this Vitola than if you were to create something that was a little bit larger and like a Toro Extra or Robusto Extra, maybe something that was like a 52 or 54 ring gauge wouldn't be as good. Um, so you could make that argument, counter argument if you wanted to. Um, but for me, it's just, it's like, it's teetering, but I really liked it minus the first minute. So if you say subtract the first minute and the other 60 or 59 minutes, however long it took me to smoke the cigar, it was really incredible. I think, you know, I can take that small nominal amount and, and forget about it where the rest of it I thought was really delicious. So for me, 1250, I've had worse cigars for 1250. That's for sure. I've had better cigars for 1250. I think it's, I think it's teetering, but I'm going to say worth it. I'm going to say appropriately priced, barely. What was the La Camina at? Like 13 or 14. It was the same price, or it was the same Vitola size almost, wasn't it? Uh, pretty close, yeah. I think it. I think the La Camina I mean, like a 46. Yeah. But there was like different Vitolas for the La Camina. Nah, I got to stick with it. I got to stick with it. It gives these backsies. Okay, it gives these backsies. So you're saying that appropriately priced worth the 1250. Yeah, no. It's... Still getting a Delta. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. That was fun. Um, okay. So where does that bring you to? We're Four. revealing the scores again. Ooh. So it's okay for us to converse around what we feel the cigar is worth and representing the score to the collective masses because we're not trying to hide in anything anymore. So Chris, what did you rate this cigar? Construction was pretty solid. Minus a little bit of cap issues. Burn was amazing. Flavor, pretty dang good. Price, ooh, make me sad. Um, I give this one a 90.7% rating, which is a highly recommended cigar. I thought it was really good. Um, I, did, I do still struggle with the price just a bit. Right. Um, Construction-wise, cigar was pretty flawless. Um, 
as I've already articulated minus a little bit of a lazy cap structure. One thing that drives me nuts, man, is like wonky cap structures that like the caps kind of peeling a little bit. It's like, come on, motherfucker. Like I know it's like you have one job, so figure it out. Um, absolutely amazing draw. Perfect smoke production. Passed our whole test flawlessly. Um, the burn is arguably the best thing about this cigar. I really like the flavors as it started to get going. Yeah. I appreciated them more and more all the way to the end. And I thought the complexity of the cigar was exactly is exactly what I was hoping for in this release of warp cigar. I rated this cigar at a 92 and a half. Mm. Yes. So average two scores together gives us a 91.6. We'll average that out to a 91.5. Yeah. I think that's a great score. I think it's a great score. That is a really good score. That's a good one to kick off the year with. And I think it's worth that. And that would, of course, put this in the highly recommended category. Um, again, minus the 1250. Pretty good cigar. I mean, dude, if you could get this cigar for like nine bucks. Oh, dude, man. I'd, I'd give it a plus. All goddamn day long. I'd give it a plus. It really is that good. I like the cigar a lot. I like the burn time. I love the Vitola. Like, it's just perfect it's perfect like all this for me personally it hits all those markers right like i've found myself more and more getting away from larger vitola cigars i smoked one last night chris i kid you not i smoked one i bought that uh the uh, eskimo tent which is yeah perfect. so it's two person you fit two guys in there it's wonderful see you in there tomorrow uh, put, put my little space heat. dude it was great put my little space heater in there it was fucking awesome just just fucking chilled in that thing all night but i smoked a cigar that was a toro extra it was like a six and a half by 52 is like the largest cigar I've smoked in a long time. Yikes. I swear to God, it took me two and a half hours to smoke that motherfucker. And I was like, I ain't got time for this. So I am finding myself really erring to like smaller Vitolas or even like Lanceros. It's like, we may say it's a, it's a seven inch cigar, mm. but it's only a fucking 38 uh. ring gauge. I can smoke through it quickly. I, dude, I'm on that whole, like, if I'm not done in an hour, I'm wasting time. So well, I've yeah. got all these fucking thick ass dongers that I have not smoked. I have so many fucking large cigar large cigars. I I don't know what to do with them because I'm not smoking them. You know, it, it that that always plays a factor for sure. I, Cause I think you're kind of the hors d'oeuvre appetizer eater, right? You like you wanna you wanna enjoy a variety of things in the time you got, right? Yeah, of course. And like when you're eating one meal for the entire duration of your experience, like you get you just get kind of yeah, Yo. the level of commitment you have to give to that one thing. Yeah, I get it. It's a lot. It's I a get lot. It. Like, even when I'm reviewing now, I'm like, give me the smaller Vitola. Daddy ain't got time for this. <laughs> yeah. It's just too much. Um, So I've got some really fat dongs. Like, all, I mean, I've had some really large Vitola cigars. I'm like, I got to smoke. That's what I did last night. I'm like, you know what? I want to, I want to get the full pleasures of this purchase. And I really want to like, you know, it's, it's like buying any, like buying anything new. You're like, you're getting in that break in period, figuring what, what you like, what you don't like. So I'm like sitting in this tent. I'm like, I can spend a considerable amount of time in here because it's new and I'm figuring it out. Where do I position my seat? Where, how, what kind of temperature I put it at? Like what, what am ventilation? Do I open up this window or do I open up this window? This flap versus this flap. So it was okay last night because I was breaking in this new toy but that cigar, dude, it's like there. I don't want to smoke that. It's too much. It was too yeah. much. It was. Yeah. I was out there for two and a half hours, and even for me, as comfortable as I was in my rocking chair, it's like this is too much. Yeah, too much cigar. And it was only a six, I think six and a half by fifty two. It's not even that big. I, I imagine you felt like I felt like when I spent like an hour and a half eating like twenty four jalapeno poppers, probably over it at about number twelve. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> just fucking end it. Yeah. I'm sure that's, a, I'm sure there's some similarities there. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Um, all right. Let's wrap it up. What a good review to the start of 2021, a no. year that I'm sure will be better than the last one. But you know what? I yeah. could jinx it by saying that. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. You could jinx it and you probably likely did. Um, I want to thank our show sponsor, My Cigar Pack. I will say this, our promo code is back, hot ten at checkout for $10 off your first pack. They have the subscription package um, for ongoing monthly subscriptions. There's the factory direct um, subscriptions that you can apply for as well, which 
the Donger was a part of. Donger's Knockout released uh, back in December. And I will be honest with you, it's going so well. There's <laughs> so many people buying Dongers. It's unreal. I mean, they literally every day I get messages of like, my Donger showed up. I'm like, this is fucking fantastic. So people are really enjoying that cigar. Um, so you can find the cigar. It's not going to be a part of the, uh, the subscription factory direct stuff because that was for the month of December, but you can buy individual five packs of the cigar at cigaryard.com. So go there, cigaryard.com. Um, and I'll provide a link somewhere like down here. Um, so people can see it, uh, the URL that you can go to. So the donger, I believe is still available. I have no idea how many are left. Um, but they are, people are still buying them, which is fucking crazy, which is awesome. But so visit my cigar pack, www.mycigarpack.com promo code hot tenant checkout for $10 off your first pack cigaryard.com. Um, if you're still interested yeah. in buying the dongers knockout release, you got to buy them now. You don't want donger sloppy seconds from someone else who already got them. And then you're yeah. take, you're taking them off of someone else. You don't want to be, you don't have sloppy seconds. No, you don't want that. Get your donger now. So it's fresh in your mouth and yep. you, know, you don't have to worry about someone else's mouth being on it already. That's true. Um, also visit our website, www.hotticketweekly.com. This review will be up there, including the podcast. We will be publishing a ton of reviews going forward. I think, Chris, I think we can hit the 100 mark this year. I really think we're not going to have a problem hitting 100 mark. I'll put it this way. I really think that my contribution to the 100 mark is definitely going to exceed expectations. Yours, I'm still not sure about. Yeah, but, but I, I think, know for a fact that I will do over fifty. Yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely doable. Um, I uh, I think you guys will be happy. I think you'll be happy um, with the direction. I mean, who doesn't want to get to a cigar review in like ten seconds? That's true. <laughs> hey, nobody got time for that. We should put the meme of that lady on there on the site. Yeah, yeah. Do like a little crop out. Do her like like stylistically make it like yours but just like pop her into you <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah i hope people enjoy it so this will be the first review that comes out so when you guys hear this you can also read the review on the site so you can actually like see the new formatting and the whole thing um hoping to get and and i'm gonna remind on this podcast every time we record so chris doesn't forget that we are going to be doing a site refresh at some point and I'm going to keep saying it so it's not forgotten. I'm still um, working on it. Site refresh will be coming at some point in 2021. That's the goal. Um, honestly, <laughs> if it goes to the end of the year, I'm going to be very upset. If I was the maestro, the maestro del tiempo, the master of time, it would already be done because I would stop time right now yeah. to get it done and then release it like that could you if i was the master of time okay um clearly you're not that so uh let's conclude this episode this is episode 181 so we're chugging right along we're inching up on episode 200 which is weird i feel like i should start prepping for that now i feel like 200 has got to be what do we want to do at 200 no idea what i want to do i have no idea we should do probably- we get to meet the president when we reach 200 uh it'll be biden at the time he'll be he'll be taking a nap probably while we record <laughs> um <laughs> next week is a really cool episode i'm really excited it's going to be another interview and the interview is going to be with somebody who we traditionally would not interview but is very much ingrained in the cigar community so very excited about that episode you can check out last week's episode with danny vasquez sorry there was no video it fucking got lost in the ether i have no idea what happened to it but you can get the you can listen to the interview on all podcast platforms it was an awesome interview. I mean, a lot of people are like, that was really dope. I mean, you get to hear Danny's backstory and you get to uh, understand his vision of what he's doing in his new organization, Baracoa, um, with the Voyage Cigar. You get to join him on his voyage. Yeah. You get to join him on his voyage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, check out that interview. It was fucking awesome. And um, that's it. That's it. You know. The episode. I'm hungry. I think it's going to be a good year, bro. It's going to be yeah, 2021. Make it to I think it's going to be a good year. Year's resolution. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I hope so. I hope so. I am uh, I am encouraged because it can't get any worse in 2020. That's true. Just kidding. I mean, it's just impossible. So 
Well, I say that, but knock on wood, it's probably just like everything's going to blow up. Soon. Actually, I just realized mine actually start off really shitty. Yours did. Yeah. Your 2021 is worse than your 2020. Holy hell. In some aspects. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Your 2020, dude, this has not started great for you at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you're yeah. saying. I don't know why you, you have a f- false sense of optimism when you've yeah. already smacked in the nuts in the first 14 days of the year. Well, the glass is an eighth full. I'm an optimist. That's <laughs> true. Fair enough. All right. Um, that'll be it. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode. This concludes episode 181. We'll be back at you next week with episode 182. See everyone. Bye.